Well, by now I think you know the basic qualities of an index. An index is something that takes a list of terms, either one-word terms or multi-word terms, and relates them to different items of information in, a, um, in an info base. So the kind, of, uh, the kind of indexes we've been talking about are usually human-created, and they're a list of terms that you believe best describe the content of this info base. Let's talk now about a different kind of an index, a full text index, that's a, that works a little bit differently. Although it is an index and it, it follows exactly the same qualities of being an alphabetically organized list of terms that give you access into the info base. A full text index does something very simple. It takes text from all of the items in the info base and sh in effect shakes out all the text and then takes all the text and reorganizes it alphabetically. So you can imagine taking a book, for example, and shaking all the words out of a book and then taking all those words and alphabetizing them and then putting them in a long list. And then for each of those words, marking which page in the book that word was found on. Similarly, an in a full text index such as, for example, Google, takes all the pages, or not all the pages, but a good number of the pages on the internet, shakes out all the words from those pages, organizes them alphabetically, and links them back to the pages, uh, to, to, the web, to the web URLs where those words are located. Now that's only the beginning of, of, of what a full text search index can do. There's all sorts of other things that can happen, like for example, uh, the prioritization. If, it, if the same word appears on two different items, on two different pages, on two different uh, web pages, for example, which one do you list first when you get back the search results? What happens if the words aren't directly next to each other that you search for? So lots and lots of complexity that can go into a full text search indexing feature, but the index itself is relatively straightforward. It's also called an inverted index, but what we'll, we'll talk about it mostly as a full text index. So when I full text index the items in my database, I'm taking text out of those items, and I'm organizing it alphabetically, all the different words, and I'm allowing you then to search through the items of my info base by the words where they appear in the items. So a few things to think about in full text search. For example, uh, first of all, what words of the items are indexed? So if an item, for example, has a title, an abstract, a description, dates, authors, contributors, blah, 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 all these different elements, all these different things, it's up to the author to decide which of those words will be in the index. So I can choose to index every single word of an item, no matter where it appears, no matter what element it appears in, or I can choose just to index certain ones of them. Obviously, the most straightforward thing to do is to index something like the title and the body and leave all the rest behind. And if you don't leave all the rest behind, sometimes you might get some kind of strange results, like uh, uh, finding something that's in a comments field, for example, where you didn't really want people to search by what was in a comments field or an editor comment field or something like that. So that's a full text index used all over the place. Um, we won't create them in XML because we don't have the facility in, inside of Oxygen to create a full text index. We can't do that organization and we can't present the results and we can't take in what the user types into a box and compare it against the index and then find the right, uh, the right items that match it. But if we had a little bit more sophisticated technology, we certainly could. And if we did that, it would be an index. So just like a metadata index or um, a keyword index that we've studied before, uh, a full text index is an index. It just happens to be an index of all the words. The words are derived from the information. So the words themselves of the index are inside the information, making a, a full text search index by definition really in any index. So that full text search index takes all the words of the items, or at least the words that the author chooses, um, alphabetizes them, and links them back to the pages that, uh, that they came from so that when you search, the results of your search can return a list of pages, or in our case, really a list of items that contain the words that you searched for. Okay, just a different kind of index. And now that you know about indexes, you can know a lot about full text search that you might not have otherwise known. Also, you can know that you can use the things you know about full text search to try and figure out, well, how might I enhance other indexes? For example, in a full text search, you know, for example, if you type in Google two words, those words don't have to constitute a phrase. They can just be two separate words that appear somewhere in the same web page. And if those two words appear in the web page, you get a hit, you get back a result. Well, could you modify your keyword index, for example, to use multiple words, and if uh, any of those words or all of those words appear in a page, to bring back results? Can you create ors and ands between the words of your, of your index to create more sophisticated indexing and retrieval?
You can do all of those things, and those are lessons that we learn from full text search index. So uh, full text uh, search indexing. And so our easy indexes are the ones where you show the user all the terms, they click on a term and it takes them to all the items that have that term. A more sophisticated index is one where the user types whatever they want, you search through your index and find what, uh, what responds to those words.